Welcome, everyone. Good to see you all. And so we're going to get started with our awesome cap night capstones for college admissions process. And um, for all of our youth, if you're a youth in the house, um, can you go whoop whoop or put a um, uh, give us a notification in the uh, in the chat, or you can use your um, use your uh, your reaction tools down there. And so this is an interactive session. This is not a lecture, okay, you guys. So we want you to unmute um, as unmute yourself. Um, put on your video. We want to see your faces um, and um, and unmute yourself. Um, please engage. Feel free to engage with our speakers. They are here for you. All right. And always share with our youth, even at the movie center. You never know who you're going to meet. Um, I am Miss Christel. You never know who you're going to meet. That's going to remember your face and say, hey, weren't you the one in the cap meeting? And maybe they could be a resource for you, right? So you never know. So feel free to engage with us. Um, no pressure at all, but we absolutely invite you to engage um, and participate in this session. Um, again, it is for you. And tonight you all will be learning about how to select your college and also how to write your um, how to write your your get started with your college essays. Okay. And so just so we know who's in the room, can you guys put in the chat what grade you're in? Please put your name and what grade um, you are in in the chat. In the chat, again, your name. So actually, let's do this. Your, your name, your grade, and what you want to do for your career choice, right? Because that also determines what kind of college you're going to go to, right? Your name, your grade, and your career choice. Awesome. And I'm going to go over to my lovely notes because we have some really awesome speakers that are going to share with you. And, um, and so, um, and so we have um, awesome, um, awesome women, awesome sisters from the Tau Beta chapter um, with the AKAs. And, um, and so um, we have, uh, we have Miss, hold on, let me see all my screens are. Merging together. Welcome to the wonderful world of technology. We have Miss Annette Story, and we have Miss Jean uh, J uh, Gig Giggers, or is it Jiggers? Giggers. All right. Okay. No Jiggers. All right. <laughs> I was right the first time. Miss Jean Jiggers and Miss Annette Story that are going to be sharing with you all um, this evening. And um, let me just share a little bit about. Um, our awesome speakers here. So you know what? Um, my my notes are trying to get by me, but as we go, I'll share with you a little bit more um, about our speakers, so you know who you're you're who's sharing with you, and they have a background and a wealth of knowledge. And so I'm actually going to kind of do it in the opposite order, but I'm going to have um, you all just to introduce yourself and. To, um, um, Miss Miss uh, Jean, I know you're going. You're going. You're sharing first. Sure. Hi, everyone. Yes. I yes. am super excited to be here um, and talking about something that is critically important, and that is how to select your college. Um, or you want you want to do everything so that the college selects you and you also select the college and it's a great marriage. So we'll get more into that. Um, and I will turn the mic over to um, my sorority sister, Annette. Good evening, everyone. So it occurs that my Wi-Fi is starting to be uncooperative. So I'm hoping that it will stay uh, with me. So I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Jean, what did you say before you asked me to come on? That's all I heard was my name. <laughs> oh, I just, I just said my name and what I was speaking on today. Oh, okay, great. So my name is Annette Story, and I will be speaking to you this evening about writing a personal statement slash your personal essay. 
So I'll be going over the different types and what they, what colleges are looking for. So I look forward to talking to you and getting your feedback and participation as well. Awesome. 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 So Ms. Jean, I know that they, you're going first, you're sharing first. And so I am, and I'm sorry, I didn't, did you want me to, 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 um, tell about myself? Yes. Um, okay. please go for it. My notes, my notes are not where I would easily like them on my fingertips, but please Got feel it. free to do so. Yes. No problem. Okay. Um, hi everyone. Uh, again, I'm Jean and, um, coming to you from, a very warm place in the Southern California Valley. <laughs> I actually am a registered nurse. Uh, my current role is a nurse executive for the largest public health plan in the country. We service 2.5 million people. And um, it, I oversee a very large team of physicians, nurses, and coordinators and providing and so providing services for our members who carry our insurance and, and medical coverage, um, as well as providing support for the community and the hospitals. Uh, in COVID, we've been very, very busy uh, transferring members all over LA County to all of the over 120 hospitals in the area and beyond. Um, I actually, um, I've, as a nurse, I have had a lot of really cool jobs. My favorite, though, by far, has been um, teaching nursing students and being an instructor. I, I, I met, have an, an educator at heart. Um, I actually have done what uh, I have lived and breathed and walked and talked. Um, what I'm about to share with you today, because I have a blended family um, and out of my, among my four children, three of them are adults. And I've done this process with all four of them now. Um, but my older three, the, the older three who are adults have uh, collectively, they've all been offered full ride scholarships. Um, and collectively the schools have been Harvard, Vanderbilt, Emory, Stanford, um, Spelman, Auburn, mm -hmm. Louisiana State University, Mississippi State, and USC. And so um, I've got, you know, quite a bit of experience with this. I have one uh, daughter, the youngest is a junior in high school. And so she actually is where a lot of you are now. And, and so all of this information is very fresh for me. Um, I am married. I have a, an amazing husband and a four-year-old granddaughter, Aria, who is the light of my life. Um, so now that you know a little bit about me, uh, let's talk about what we came to uh, glean today. And I am going to share my screen. Okay. So you guys, you all have some very, I do apologize, some very interesting um, career selections. Uh, they are actually careers that are in demand. And I wanna applaud and commend you for um, having that level of thought. I do want to, uh, we wanna start out though by looking at how do we make decisions? How do we get from where we are today um, as a high school student to where we want to be as a thriving professional? And that pathway for all of the careers that I saw in the chat absolutely goes through college. And so you've got some major decisions in front of you. Um, and we, so today we're gonna talk about colleges, universities, and the rest of your life. How to start choosing where you will end up. And so, I'm sorry, I have to keep moving my, um, keep moving the bar. Okay, so to, tonight we're gonna talk about what to consider how to do your research, 
and building your list. Um, it's really important. Uh, you guys, so you, you're welcome to take pictures of my screen um, and take notes because these are, are um, some critical steps that you absolutely want to make sure that you capture. Um, we're going to spend quite a bit of time on building a list and what it looks like. And we'll also touch on community college and why it's important in the role that it could play um, as you start to create your own path. All right. So I want to start off with um, Principles of Centered Leadership by Stephen Covey. And uh, Stephen Covey is a world-renowned subject matter expert in leadership. And I chose this specifically because although where you are in your life today, you might not feel like much of a leader of your life because you have lots of authority figures, right? You have your parents and you have your family members, um, maybe even some friends and teachers, other kinds of educators, your pastor, et cetera. But um, as you start to mature uh, and in this process where you are now in high school is gonna happen very, very rapidly. I see we have at least one senior in the group. And so um, I'm, I, I suspect um, that you're starting to feel what it is now to kind of take over the wheel and, and to, to steer and guide your own ship. And so these are some guiding principles that you should have, not just for this process, um, but all along the way uh, in, in life. And the first thing you want is to be proactive. Well, you can check that box because you're here. Unlike some of your friends who are not, you are being proactive because you are getting information and knowledge to be able to help you um, to get some advance notice as opposed to allowing life to happen to you. Being proactive gives you the opportunity to actually have a little bit more control. Begin with the end in mind. And this is a critical step. We'll spend a little bit more time on that and we'll talk about that later. Put in first things first. This is going to be an important step when you start to create your list of options for your college and university. Okay, and we you want to think when, when. What does that mean? So you can't you, you can't please everybody, and it's it'll be a rare instance if you can choose a college or a university that will check all of your boxes. Well, that you know, there's everything about it is super fantastic, great, and it's a perfect fit. Um, chances are there's gonna be a couple of things that you be like, mm, it's not so great. You know, it doesn't that doesn't work that well for me. However, it may be things that you can make adjustments for. OK, you want to seek first to understand um, that is that little icon is a is a brain that's divided in two. It's like left brain, right brain. Um, so you want to use the entirety of your brain and your resources to be able to understand um, and really dig down into these lists that you're going to create um, to be able to make some decisions. Um, then you want to synergize. You want to pull everything together. You want to you 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 would like to take a have a big picture look at each school and then drill down into the details. After that, sharpen the saw. And this is something that is a hallmark trait of a good leader. And what sharpen the saw means is now after gathering all of this information and really doing a, um, a very thoughtful, um, doing very thoughtful research about these schools, share, share your knowledge, share your understanding. Don't keep it all to yourself. I will stop here. Let's see. Let me open the chat. Okay. Oh, five seniors. Holy moly. All right. Congratulations, seniors. Okay. 
so are there any anybody have any questions for me would anybody like to come off of chat okay we'll keep going i'm sorry off of mute all righty so um i am going to challenge you today to do something um that's a little bit different than what you may have heard start in the future and work your way backwards what I mean by that is picture yourself where you want to be. Quite a few of you have identified career choices. Amazing. That's a good thing. But if you don't know, that's okay too. That actually um, is probably more realistic uh, for quite a few people because believe it or not, um, more people go into college thinking that they really know what they want to do. And when they get to college, they get exposed to so many cool things um, that they realize that mm, this may not be a good fit for me. Or this may, you know, this um, this other thing over here sounds it, it is more appealing. This other major, this other career path. So you want to do a self-assessment. And um, in terms of the career path that you chose, if you want to be a, you know, some, a, a, um, a medical clinician, are you good at science? You really need to be. Um, you don't have to be good at all sciences. You don't have to be great at physics. Uh, but there are certain sciences that you really that you can't get away from and they're going to follow you all through school so strong biology for example um so you definitely want to do a self-assessment and, and just do a very realistic look at um what your academic strengths are what your hobbies and interests are and how they fit into the career goals or aspirations that you may be considering and so uh, that's a part of exploring your options. Um, and if it is that, you know, there's someone in the group who perhaps wants to be, you know, an engineer, um, you may not know what kind of engineer. You may want to be civil. You may want to be uh, mechanical, but you definitely need to look into what that looks like or, you know, an IT career what the branches are that um, stem off of something like um, a career in IT. So once you have a relatively good idea of what uh, you would like to be uh, in terms of a, a career professional, that's how you are able to select a major. And your major of course, is, is what your primary academic focus is going to be when you get to college. Understand this, because this is something that people just don't readily tell you. Most of your first two years of college, you will be taking general education classes. They, they, they are referred to as gen ed. So you will be taking, you may be taking, you know, some classes that are related to your major, um, but the other classes are going to be things that you are very familiar with, like social science classes, um, it, like uh, English classes. You may have to take a statistics class and you're wondering, well, what in the heck, I'm a psychology major, what in the heck does statistics have to do with me? In order to get a four-year degree or to have a four-year degree bestowed up on you by any college or university, they actually have some basic stuff that they require you to know because they don't want you going out into the world with a degree that bears their name and you don't know how to put a good paragraph together. So there are some gen ed classes that you will be taking in you know, sometimes it's kind of yawn um, to get through those first two years. And once you get to be what is considered to be an upperclassman, junior, senior year, that's when you get to really roll up your sleeves and get your put, put your hands in the thing that, you know, is really drawing you as far as your career. That's when, you know, you, you get to take all of the really cool um 
classes, not not necessarily all of them, but you get to take a lot of the really cool classes. So uh, you definitely want to make sure that your major for you is going to be realistic um, and that there's alignment, meaning this is something that you can stomach for four years of college. If math is not your thing, you, you might not do so well as a finance major. Okay. And once you figured out what your options are for a major, um, because if you want to be a physician, guess what? You actually can major in math. There, I've worked with dozens of physicians who have undergraduate degrees in mathematics. Um, so don't, you, you can kind of think outside of the box, but you definitely want to want to have some idea of what you want to major in when you get to school. I am so sorry. See, I carry two phones. You don't you don't want to get that popular. All right. Um, so the next step, once you have an idea of what your major is, that's when you can really start taking a close look at schools because you want to choose, select a school or select from a school that has, um, that offers your major. You, it's gonna be very challenging, for example, if you want to, if, if you want a, a STEM career, and you choose a liberal arts school, doesn't mean that you can't thrive um, in a, on the STEM pathway. No, Spelman is a liberal arts school. There are, I know, there are dozens and dozens and dozens, I mean, of people that I know personally who are dentists and you know physicians and um, engineers and things like, so, it doesn't mean that you don't eliminate the school, but it should have some bearing um, in terms of choices if you have options. And you also want to look at um, a plan A and a plan B for your career. And this may not be something that you readily know up front, but it's helpful when you start researching schools. Um, I often tell the story about my best friend, she actually is a pediatric oncologist. However, she, the entire time we grew, were growing up and we've been friends since middle school, she wanted to be a pharmacist. And that was what she was stuck on. She chose her college, went to Xavier University in Louisiana because it was one of the best schools in the country for, for people who wanted to pursue a career in pharmacy. She gets to Xavier well into her junior year. She's doing an internship at a, in, at a pharmacy, a local pharmacy, might've been Walgreens. She called me up and she said, Jean, I can't do this for the rest of my life. This is boring. So she fortunately was at a school where she could just, pretty much switch gears very quickly. And she decided to, to take her chemistry major and translate it into a pathway into medicine. And so she, you know, her plan A didn't necessarily work out, but she was able to implement her plan B or launch a plan B without a huge disruption from the standpoint of where she was attending school. I will stop there for any questions or comments. None. Okay, so I'm gonna, I, I would like to know if you could put in the chat for me, what are some schools that you guys are interested in? And while you do that, I will keep going. All right. So here's the meat of um, this particular presentation and what we're talking about right now. And that is what goes into choosing a school. 
We already talked about academic programs. Um, one of the things that's critically important that some people overlook, especially when it comes to small schools, is, is this school accredited? Are they legit? That's basically what that means. Is the school legit? Um, because even if a school starts out being what is formally called accredited, meaning that, you know, the regulatory agencies and the government and the powers that be have, have looked at the school and say, yep, you are your legitimate college or university, schools do lose their accreditation. So you definitely want to make sure that your school is accredited because guess what? If it turns out that you have gone to this school for three years and you find out that they're not accredited, it's going to be really hard for you to convince somebody to allow you to transfer to a school that is. And it, it discounts your degree um, if you actually end up graduating from that particular school. You want to look at admissions requirements. Does your transcript and the classes that you have taken or the classes that you are planning to take align with what is required to get into that school? Foreign language is really tricky because the foreign language requirements in California may be very different than the foreign language requirement at somebody's target school, like maybe Duke. Duke might want three years of a foreign language where the state of California set up, you just need two. So you definitely wanna make sure that there's alignment there. Um, test scores are not as big a deal these days because of COVID, but you definitely wanna, you, would, you want to know in advance are, is, are, are my target schools or my goal schools, are they waiving um, test scores, SAT, ACT scores, uh, or, or do I really need to be spending my resources, you know, getting the minimum test score that's required to get into to the schools that I'm interested in applying to? Location is a big deal. Um, especially because, um, it's when you, if you decide to go to a school that you have to literally travel to get there, homesickness is a thing. You definitely want to consider, carefully consider the location. Um, and it's a very normal and it goes away. So, you know, don't be one of those kids who get to school and not engage because you miss your family and your friends so much that, you know, that becomes a distraction for you. But location is a big deal. My middle daughter um, was stuck on Duke. Whole time she was in high school. I'm going to Duke. I'm going to Duke. I'm going to Duke. Well, when we started doing college tours and her dad took her on a, a campus visit of Duke, she found out it's literally in the middle of nowhere. Huge, beautiful campus that you have to drive past a whole lot of cows and pastures and nothingness to get to. And so that visit totally changed her um, outlook and she immediately scratched Duke off the list because she's kind of a city girl. And she was concerned that she would not be able to have a life outside of the campus. Size, is, that is important. Are you a social butterfly or do you learn better in, in a smaller setting, in smaller settings with more you know, one-on-one -on -one time and instruction with your um, teachers? Is the school affordable? And for affordability, you, you need to look at two major things. They're not the only two things, but these two things are, are pretty important. You want to look at school-related expenses. So that is tuition, room and board, your fees. Um, if you're taking science classes, you're going to have fees. Books, um, which, which, you know, your books, the, that's a pretty static 
um, bill, so to speak. So meaning what you pay for books at one school is probably going to be the same. It translates to be very close to the same as what you pay for books at another school. But you still want to make sure that as you're counting your coins, and whether or not I can actually afford this school, that's something you don't want to leave off the list. Okay, so the, you have a lot of different school related expenses and most of the, the uh, university websites will have a breakdown of what those generally could look like. Then there's the local cost. And so what I mean by local cost is what does it take? How much is it going to cost you to exist? in the city or in the town where your school is. Um, I, a good example of that would be kids who don't live in the state of California who want to come to school at UCLA or USC or, you know, Stanford, any of these schools in um, a U, UCSB, any, any of the schools in California, but if you're a kid that's coming from Kentucky and planning to attend school uh, on the West Coast, there's a big sticker shock that's going to come along with that. You know, you might have been able to pay $2.50 for a tube of toothpaste at home and here it's going to cost you $4. And so those are... Um, you, you definitely want to look at the cost of living because you're going to want to go off campus to get groceries or buy shampoo and some other things that are that will be really important to you. Go to the movies, go on dates, um, and those are very important. Academic reputation is, it can be important. It's not a, it's, it's not a deal breaker. However, what I can tell you is that if you do pick a school, even if the school doesn't necessarily have, a, you know, one a super strong reputation, they may have a program at that school that has an amazing reputation. For example, the business program at Auburn University is world renowned. Um, I happen to know that because one of my kids ended up with a business degree from that school. I didn't know on the front end that it was a big deal. Um, but the academic reputation can open doors for you when you start applying, either applying for jobs or applying for school beyond college, like graduate school or a professional uh, school, like, you know, dentistry or med school, something like that. So it will make you more competitive in the job market and for further education if the school that you're graduated from does have that strong reputation. I'm gonna stop for just a second and peek at the chat to see if I'm missing anything. Um, okay. Not yet. All right. Um, campus culture and the environment. Are, are any schools on your list party schools and that's just not your jush? You know, that's that's not that's not what you like or where you thrive. Um do, does the school have a culture or a reputation of discrimination and racism um is there a supportive environment um is this is is this is what makes campus visits so critically important super duper important so uh if you get the opportunity to do a campus visit even if it's a virtual jump on it because sometimes you can get, especially in person, but sometimes even virtually, you can get a strong feel for the school and the what I call the energy of the school once you do a visit. Uh, get a campus tour with the, my youngest daughter. This summer, we went to Xavier and we went to Dillard. She, um, 
has decided that she will only consider HBCUs. I'm very proud of that. Uh, and so we, I had, you know, a sense of what Xavier was like because my best friend went there. Dillard, I had only been to that campus once in and out to go visit a friend um, back when I was in college several decades ago. However, when we got to Dillard, we were so surprised at how nice it was, not just the aesthetic of the school, but just the feel and the energy. And she said, oh, this feels like home um, to her spirit. So that was really important. And Dillard wasn't even on, the, on her school list, but now it's number three. So um, what kind of employment support do they give their students uh, when it's time for the, the kids, for the, the college students to transition from being a college student to being an employee? Do they have job fairs? Um, at Southern University, for example, they, the job fair that they host, it is in what's called the mini dome, which is literally a, a very large arena. And there are a plethora of very well-known companies that descend every time into the mini dome, every time there's a job fair because they are hungry for students from particular majors um, on their campus. So you definitely want to know, you know, what are you gonna do for me to help me in this competitive job market when it's time for me to toss my tassel and walk out of here. The alumni network is also critically important. A school that has a very strong alumni network, meaning these are the people who graduated from that school, can open all kinds of doors for you. So, you know, look into um, the alumni network. These are, are people who can, can do a, a lot for you. Sometimes they'll just look on your resume and say, oh, you graduated from uh, Hampton. Oh, my daughter graduated from Hampton. And immediately you have a connection with the person that's interviewing you. Um, okay, balance. I cannot, I probably should have put this at the top of the list because I can't stress enough how important it is to have balance when you get to college. I have had, I had this conversation over and over with my son before I, we left him in Baton Rouge at LSU, on LSU's campus. There is going to be a lot of freedom for you and a lot of opportunities to use that freedom for a lot of different things. It is critically important even if, you, even if you are laser focused on your academics, which is great, that you have balance, that you find clubs, that you find friends, that you find something, of, you know, a yoga class, something to keep your life in balance and everything moderate. Um, conversely, you know, you some some people when they get to campus, they they have a hard time adjusting to having so much freedom and no restrictions, and you know nobody tapping you on the shoulder saying get up and go to class. Um, and they've been, you know, they party pretty hard the night before. So you you know you're a college student, you're at college. Don't lose focus of why you are there. Um, however, you know, take the time to um, get a haircut or um, go toward the city when it, if it's if it's safe. And here's a little caveat: most major schools, even the really, you know, snooty ones, are literally in the middle of the hood. Um, the first time I was headed to Yale University, I stopped for gas down the street, gunshots um, in the hood. So don't be surprised 
if, you know, when you're pulling up to a school for the first time, one side of the campus may be super nice, the other side of the campus, not so much. Um, so that, you know, that's just something to um, keep in mind. And then connections. So the really important thing about connections is there, there are, what I've taught my kids is when you ain't at, at school, yes, academics is important, but it's also critically important for you to build your network. And what that is going to look like for you, if your network is healthy, is you are going to have your tribe. Your tribe are the people who are really close to you. These are people who are going to be your ride or die and usually will end up being lifelong friends, okay? So this is your tribe. This is like the, the person that you might call and say, I ran out of money for the laundry. You know, can I hold a few dollars? Or... um. I'm super, or you get sick and they got, they know how to get in touch with your mom. Um, that's your tribe. Okay. And then you have your community. Your community is essentially a lot of people that's on that campus. It's your instructors. It is uh, people that, you know, you might play intramural volleyball with. It is, um, the, the folks that work in the cafeteria, especially if you go to an HBCU, because they don't know you by name. They don't know what you like. Um, they're uh, particularly at HBCUs. The entire campus is invested, even the people who cut the grass. They are rooting for you. Um, and this is uh, your this is your community. Thirdly, you have your network. They, the people in your community can also be people in your network, but these are people that you definitely want to make some connections with because you never know. You might need a letter of recommendation or they may be able to help you to get a job or they may be a pathway for you to join a fraternity or a sorority, which kind of goes, circles back up to balance um, and what you, what you do and who you are. And, and these, this whole um, I, I think of them as circles, concentric circles. They eventually shape and form who you become. I will stop there to see if there are any questions. Comments. Are y'all asleep? <laughs> okay, somebody talk to me so I know I'm not talking to myself. You're not talking to yourself. Okay, Annette, you don't count. I want to hear from I want to hear from the students. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I see a message in the chat. Okay, is this I, I is this? Thank you, thank you. Okay, yay! All right, let me know if this is not useful. Okay, we can switch gears. Alrighty, so research resources. So these are this list is uh, is to help you to know how to do the research because I've given you a lot of information and you now you may want to know. Okay, well you gave me all this stuff. I don't even know how to get started. Um, so here are some resources for you if you haven't already started or even if you have and you need to start refining um, the list or expanding the list. You want to meet with your guidance counselor. Some of them are just super amazing, incredible humans, and they have a wealth of knowledge. And if your guidance counselor is not one of these folks, there's probably one at the school who is. So don't be afraid to advocate for yourself and say, yeah, this one is now, you know, giving me what I need. Let me go tap this one on the shoulder. Okay. There's alumni and alumni networks. If you are interested in, I'm promoting HBCUs. I'm a little biased. I must say I have children. I, I, I went to both. Um, 
at HBCU and PWI, predominantly white institution, and so did my children. Um, so we're going to say, if you're interested in going to North Carolina A&T, on Twitter and Instagram and some other social outlets, they have alumni networks that you can you can literally message people um, or message the school to ask very specific questions. And they will tell you um, how, you know, what it's like at the school, what's good about it, what sucks about it, the food is great, you know, is hot all the time because the air conditioner keeps breaking. They can give you all the dirt, but they can also give you all of the good stuff. Okay. Um, we talked about the online college tours on YouTube or in the college websites. If you have the opportunity, now that the world is starting to slowly open back up, um, there are, I know, HBCU tours where you can, you know, hop on a plane, then get on the bus and you can see multiple schools in the span of a few days. Um, college fairs. There used to be, and hopefully it will resume in February, every year in February, down at the convention center, there's this huge um, HBCU college, Black college, it's called the Black College Expo. Guess what? It's not just Black colleges at the Expo. My youngest daughter, when she was in the eighth grade, was offered a full ride to Notre Dame on the spot. Um because she, she's a, was a very accomplished swimmer. They didn't know at the time that she was in eighth grade. So don't, you know, just, even if you're not interested in go, going to an HBCU, go to that expo anyway, because they have all kinds of schools there. And those expos um, and college fairs, sometimes we have recruiters that can get, grant you entry to the school on the spot if you have the right credentials. If you bring a copy of your transcript, sometimes they even will offer scholarships on the spot. Um, talk to family and friends. Family and friends, they're going to be tend to be a little biased, sometimes very biased. Um, so though, that's something that you definitely want to keep in mind. I would say, though, that the one of the most valuable conversations that you can have with your family and friends is to really get them to hold a mirror up to you uh, so that you can get a clear understanding, a true understanding of who you are. Um, because, you know, we tend to see ourselves this one way when other people's perception and reality of who we are and what we like and what type of environments are good for us and what we would thrive in, they may have a totally different idea um, than what we're thinking for ourselves. Uh, we talked about school visits and make sure you keep a consistent list of questions. What I can tell you um, unequivocally in that in all of the college tours that I've been fortunate enough to take my kids on and drag them literally to different places across the country is that on these tours, they're usually conducted by the admissions counselors. Be engaging because the admissions personnel are the folks that's going, they want to, if they can, if you are memorable and you ask good questions, um, they will seek you out. They will look for you. Um, before we went to Dillard, my daughter emailed the admissions counselor a bunch of questions. We got to the school to do the tour. He actually was touring a different group of students. But when we got back, um, the secretary said, Mr. Such and Such said, please don't leave until he talks to you. He wants to meet you face to face. So in that conversation, we were able to, to glean that every student who gets accepted to Dillard starts out with a $6,000 grant. That made a big difference for us with having two kids in college at the same time, and it moved Dillard way up our list. Um, but he, was a, he told us, he said, now I know who you are. Let me know when you send your application in because, you know, they, he, there's that connection there. 
All righty. So, oh, I apologize. Okay. All right, so here's how to start building your list. Okay, you want to look at the schools that you're willing to attend. So choose the schools you're willing to attend. Whether you get in, um, whether you think you can get in or not, you know, if you're willing to go, do it. You would be surprised. Um, when we did a campus tour at, you might want to go to Stanford. And, but you may think you can't afford it. Well, guess what? When we toured at Stanford, um, we were told then that any student who gets accepted and their household income is $100,000 or less, they have no tuition. They don't pay tuition. So don't X schools out because you think that there may be some type of a barrier unless your grades suck and you know you can't make it with the GPA that you have. Um, so then you wanna create your list with different in different categories. So you take the list of all of the schools that you're interested in and you're gonna categorize them. Is it a reach school? Meaning I have a pretty, I got a slim chance of getting in this school. And it may be, you might have the grades. You might have the scores. You might have, you know, a lot of things, but it may be that they have such a huge volume of kids who apply every year and such a small number of those that they accept that you might have to put that particular school listed as a reach school. Howard has become one of those schools. Um, it was always a very impressive school However, when the vice president of the United States took her seat as a, a, you know, in the White House as an alumna of Howard University, the market value of that school shot through the roof. And they have, they are flooded with thousands and thousands of applications every year. Doesn't mean you can't get in. However, it may, a school like that might be a rich school. Then you have what's called um, a stretch school. So this is a school that you might kind of be on the borderline and say, you know, the average GPA for the income and freshman class might be a 3.2 and you have a 3.0. Um, doesn't mean that you can't get in or that you cannot get accepted because one of the things that all of you guys have going in your favor that maybe didn't exist before the country decided that it was time to be woke um, is that you are a minority. And some of you are what's considered a double minority. Uh, you're a minority by race. And if you're a female, then that makes you a double minority. And if you, uh, and what colleges actually do is, they look across the board at incoming freshmen when they are when they are building the freshman class. They want diversity. If they don't have, if they look across the board and they say, you know what, we don't have enough males. We don't have enough black males. Okay, so this guy, he looks great on paper, but he only has a 3.0 cumulative GPA will take him. That's your stretch school. You didn't think you could get in, but the school needed you just as much as you needed the school. Okay. So then you have your 50-50 school. 50% 50 chance you get, you might, you may get in, you may not. And then there's your safety school. So these are the schools that you look at the, you look at the admissions requirements and you say, yep, I can get in this school with my eyes closed. Um, it could be a, you know, your local school. It could, it could not. It, it could be, you know, a school that may be off in the distance from you somewhere, but you have a pretty good shot of getting in that school. That's your safety school. Okay. You want to have, I'm sorry, let me do a time check. I'm, I don't want to take up too much time. Okay. You need to have at least two to three schools in each category. And I recommend that you apply to at least eight to 10. 
Um, specifically for HBCUs, there's this thing called a common app. It is one application. You fill it out one time. You pay $35. And in some instances, you can even get that waived. And when you fill out that one application, you can select to send it to at least 30 schools within the HBCU network. And you can see the list of them um, with the Common App. So after you do that, you want to identify the benefits of each college, okay? You want to look at their academic programs, what their extracurricular activities look like. Um, what are your social opportunities? You are not in college to be an island and exist as a sole person, uh, the sole proprietor. Uh, you are the sole proprietor of your life, but you remember we talked about network and how important it is. Even if you are extremely introverted, if you don't capitalize on the opportunity to build that network, you're not getting everything you need out of your college experience, okay? And affordability is key. You don't want to be, you know, one of these kids who get into school. I shouldn't call you guys kids. I apologize. Students who get into your dream school and you can't stay because you can't afford it. So that is also um, critically important. Okay. Let me check the chat right quick. Oh, three or four more minutes. All right. Yep. <laughs> well, got it. Okay. Hmm. All right. So community colleges, a great option, okay, to be affordable. A lot of them have transition programs. There's a lot of flexibility if you need to work, um, you know, to be able to provide for yourself. A community college is a great option. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to adjust from being you know, a person who is governed by your parents to being a person who has to literally make all your own choices, okay? What you wanna do, this um, last suggestion is to what I call a SWOT it out. This is a SWOT analysis, it's used in business, but it can help you in your professional life. For each school, that is a viable option for you. You want to, you make a list of all of the strengths. What are the things about this school that stands out? How does it align with my career goals and what I want to do in my life? Then there's a bucket called weaknesses. The stuff that you just don't like about the school. Is it in the middle of nowhere? Um, is it, you know, does the cafeteria, they, do they not offer enough vegan options? All right. Opportunities. What are the things that the school can offer you that's going to build on your future and your success? And then threats. What is there in that environment that may be uh, a threat? Is it that I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford that school? Is it that it's a party school? I like to party. I need to be somewhere where I can really focus. Okay. So you definitely want to do a SWOT analysis on each school. All right, this is what you should look like. This should be your facial expression when you think about your future. You guys are poised right now to be in a, in, in a premium spot. Um, and so I, am, I, I, I hope and I pray that the information that um, you were given today is going to be beneficial in helping you to figure out how to start uh, planning for the rest of your very important life. Mute it. Unmute it. Miss Jean, that was fan. Okay. Youth. I don't. Okay. So in the chat, please put down what tips did you gather? What tips did you take from Miss Jean's presentation? What tips stood out to you? Drop it in the chat because she dropped all kinds of great hip um, hips. Tips for you so that you can have that edge. So you're paying attention to all the details, you guys. We want to make sure you take advantage of every opportunity that's available. So drop it in the chat. Let me know all the tips that
concern. And so um, I want to, there's so much great information. I want to dive right in. Miss Annette has so much great stuff to share with you all as well. And so I'm going to have her to introduce herself and to dive right in because um, I want to make sure she has all the good time to give you what she has as well. And so keep dropping your tips because you're going to drop more tips from what you get learned from Miss Annette. So keep your catchers up. Okay. Wonderful. Miss Annette. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Annette Story, and I am from Los Angeles, born and raised. I went to three different colleges. I went to San Francisco State. I went to Santa Monica City College, and then I finished and graduated from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice. I worked for the federal government for 27 years and retired several years ago. And I started a career as a real estate agent just in the last year during COVID. So uh, that's my background. I do have a daughter who is actually on the Zoom. She goes to Tufts University in Massachusetts and she is there waving and studying. <laughs> She's a math major. And she um, works really hard, and but she actually also has a lot of fun um, as well in school. She's a residence assistant this year and is a junior. So um, she will answer any questions anyone has. If you have any questions about college that are recent or you know something that you wanna know from a college student, she's here to do that. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about your college essay and then we'll wrap up. Okay. Well, Ms. Marissa is going to share your presentation. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So. Oh, no, you want to um, go to present, Marissa. Mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you. So like what Miss Jean was sharing with you about choosing your college and being, you know, really thoughtful and choosing which colleges you apply to and how to really decide where you want to be. Um, one of the other important things for that decision uh, or in making your decision is really putting a lot of effort into your college um, essay. And so it's also called a personal statement. So you might see one or the other, and depending on where you're applying, if you're applying to um, through the um, the college, the Common App, or um, if you're applying to a UC, it's a little bit different. But we'll go through all of those things um, in my presentation, and we're going to go as quickly as possible. So today's agenda. So what is a college application? essay, what's the purpose, what are colleges looking for, how to write a statement that wows. I'll give you some um, tips on how to brainstorm. We won't do the activity tonight, but I will give you some information so that you can actually start working on it if you have not started working on your personal um, essay, where to start. And then I'll also give you the prompts for the Common App. Um, they've changed since last year. So uh, what is a college application essay? Does anyone want to come off of mute and share what they know about the college essay? Anyone? Um, I could go. Okay. The college essay is basically your personal essay and they give you different topics to talk about so they get a little familiarized with you. Absolutely. That is a great description of it. Thank you so much. And I couldn't tell who you, what your name is. I'm sorry. Um, oh, my name is Peyton. Thank you, Peyton. So um, your essay is something that you really want to put your effort into and making sure that you give these colleges an idea of exactly who you are, what you're up to, what you like, what your, you know, your goals are in life, uh, you know, what you want to accomplish, not just now, but later on. And you want to make sure that they um, know things about you that they can't tell from looking at your application. And so most of you will use, uh, mostly like, 
most of you will likely use the Common App or the Coalition application to submit your applications to most of the colleges, unless you're applying for a UC. And for the UC colleges, um, they have actually their own set of questions. And so they have um, four, you're gonna have to answer four questions out of eight, you get to choose which four you answer. And again, these are, uh, they're not test questions. These are questions that are going to give the people looking at your application an idea about who you are. So um, the essay is all about you and your achievements and your obstacles, your goals, your values, and just what you are up to. Remember that, that you want to give them information about you that they would not otherwise um, be able to tell just by reading. We talked about the purpose for the most part. Um, and again, like the little box says, you know, I'm not perfect, but I am unique. You do want to really focus on your qualities that are not like anyone else's. Um, you know, a lot of people might have 4.0s, um, but those people have been through different things, you know, and like Miss Jean was saying that, you know, you think that they might be looking for somebody that has only good grades and someone that has, you know, a certain background, they might want exactly what you have. And so you want to give them as much information about you as you can, because they might be looking for somebody who has a sports background that wants to be um, a, a teacher or a historian. You know, you want to give them all of that good information about you and give them as much as they can have to make a really good decision about whether they're going to select you over somebody else because they have a better idea of who you are. So what colleges look for, we've talked about this, a better understanding of your background, um, good realistic sense of who the person is behind the paper and your sense of commitment to the things that interest you more so than what you can possibly do in college, okay? Questions to ask yourself. What's different about me? What's impressive about me? What are my goals for my career? Um, what details might help these people, might help the, the admissions people get a better understanding of who you are? Um, are there gaps? This is really important. So there might be things in your past, there might be struggles that you've had that you know, your grades might have dropped because of a family situation during a semester while you were in high school or a year or something, you know, especially with COVID and who knows, you know, people have gone through a lot of challenges in the last year and a half. So you want to really give um, a good explanation. You want to talk about yourself and the things that you've gone through and how you've overcome those, those issues as well, so that they know that yeah, you might have had a bad semester, but you came back and that you're committed to your education and that it's really important for you to find the right fit and for you to be at a school that is good for you, that you feel that is, you know, the best choice for you. So here's an activity that um, I'm just going to ask you to think about it and you know after we're done you can make a list of your qualities and your characteristics that define you um, all the things that you want someone to know about you that they would not otherwise know and I'm going to keep saying it over and over again because that's what you really have to focus on you know you don't want to write a story that's like oh this is you know just kind of humdrum my life is really not exciting it's boring what are those things that make you exactly who you are that, you know, nobody else has? So please make a note of, you know, those, those, those things, those characteristics and qualities for yourself so that you can start um, choosing or, and getting prepared to write. How to write a statement that wows. So you want to be you, first of all, and you want a statement that feels natural and it comes, you know, easy to you. You want to write about the things that that really tell us a story, but you want to do it in a way that's actually exciting. You want to not 
tell a story that's kind of humdrum. You want to make sure that you are writing your paper. It's, it's not just um, it's not just like, you know, your your story about you. You want to like make this like you're sending it to a casting director so that they are going to choose you for this movie that you want it to be exciting. You want it to be thoughtful um, and you want it to be written very well. Okay, so um, an effective statement answers. Your, your statement, your personal statement wants to answer all of these questions, who you are, what do you want to be? Uh, why does it make sense for you to study at a school in California or a school in Texas or a school in Massachusetts? You know, you want to really answer those questions for yourself and for the uh, admissions board. Why is this the right place and program? Is it consistent with your studies and activities to this date? And then you draw the connections for them as to why you are applying to this school. Okay, remember this, make yourself come alive. You know, my daughter, she wrote her essays and she, you know, she practiced writing um, and then she would give them to people to review. Now you can have your peers review them for you, but you, or you can have, you know, counselors or adults in your life. You want to make sure that whoever's reviewing your essays, that they're going to be a hundred percent straight with you about how it reads and if it's, um, if it makes sense, if it sounds real, um, Marissa Starks, will you, you wanna comment on that? Sure, hi everybody, um, I'm Marissa. My mom kind of already introduced me, um, but yeah, like my, like my school had like specific um, like counselors for like college stuff. Um, and I felt super, super grateful that like my counselor was very like responsive like she would respond and like don't do this but like the day before was due I was like frantically writing one of my essays um and she would tear them apart and like it was a lot of work and um I mean it honestly just like helped me in the long run because like even though she was like kind of harsh sometimes like I know that it only made them that much better and like I'm I'm not the like pro writer of college essays like that's her job like she knows what she's doing so if you if you know somebody who's been through the process or like is really knowledgeable in this area um definitely like ask them to look over your stuff and like be brutally honest with you because it's honestly like just going to make your essays like that much stronger and stand out that much more so i definitely highly recommend like doing that yeah thank you Anyone have any questions right now for um, either one of us? Any questions about what we've talked about so far with your essay? Okay, so know that, you know, when you're choosing your prompt, um, you get to choose what resonates with you. You wanna choose something that you're interested in, okay? Um, where to be, oh, so we're gonna go back to brainstorming real quick. Okay, when you're brainstorming about how to write your essay, you want to write down all the things about yourself. It's like writing an outline. You're gonna outline all the things about yourself, everything that comes to mind that you want these schools to know about you. You wanna list what you like to do. Think about um, a story you can tell that will bring in what you like to do and who you are, but so that they get a different perspective. You don't wanna just say, I like to cook, give them a story about how you learned to cook or what inspired you to cook. Um, obstacles you've overcome, list ways that you have shown your leadership skills, um, how you've taken initiative doing things in your community with your friends, your family, with organizations that you're a part of. And also be proud, tell your story, tell about what in your life that you are proud of and why you're proud of it. People want to know who you are and exactly what you are all about, what you've done. And you wanna give them the fullest picture of what you 
have done who you are, okay? Ask yourself, what do I want this college to know about me that they don't see in my transcript or on this application? Always go back to that. You know, what am I not telling them that I could be telling them? And you wanna ask your friends and your family, the people that you have reading your essays, ask them, what did I leave out? Is there something that maybe I should have told them that I didn't tell them? And hopefully you are picking people that will be brutally honest, like Marissa said, so that they will say, hey, you didn't talk about that incident that happened, you know, six years ago that, you know, made you decide that you were going to be a doctor or made you, you know, decide that you wanted to be in STEM. So be really, really, um, you want to focus on getting as much information down that you can have that, you know, as, as much as possible. Next, okay. This is a sample. I don't think we're going to go through it now, but I think that uh, would we be able to make that available to them um, later on? Can I? Is it okay if I can give my presentation to you to to provide to the students? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um. So we'll get you the prompts. Those were two samples of essays. I want you, and you can also go online. I'm going to give you a list of resources that you can go online and you can find additional help in finding other people's essays. And then that way, once you read somebody else's essays that have been successful or that, you know, someone that they deem good essays, then you'll have a better idea of how you want to go about writing yours. Um, so again, write down everything you can. Um, go After you read some, some examples, go back to your list and think about the things that you know came up for you while you were reading somebody else's essays and write those things down. Um, and very important, you wanna add contributions that you wanna make to your school, but not just school, community and your society. It's the community and society around you. Next slide. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a couple of moments to read through these common application prompts. Again, the link is on the last page of the presentation. If you wanna take a picture of the, the links, this will be one of them. Uh, you go to the common app, website and it will give you a list of the 21 2021 2022 common app prompts. Okay. So again, review those prompts and decide what resonates with you, what speaks to you. If something speaks to you and you feel like you want to write on it, then that's what you want to choose. You know, don't choose something because you think that somebody else is going to want you to um, write about that. You know, don't have somebody else choose the prompts for you. You're the one who's writing this. This is your personal statement. Make it personal to you and give it your all. Make sure you have, you know, someone again, review, review, review. And it's not a one time, it's not a one and done thing. You want to make sure you write it, you review, you rewrite so that you're giving them the best statement that you can give them um, and start now. Uh, lack of planning is the cause of most failures. You know, I know that we all can tend to procrastinate, but if you can think about this being something that is going to be a life changer for you, you know, how you write your essay can make or break your college career. So make sure that you put your effort into this essay as your statement, as your personal piece that tells everyone about you and who you are so that you have an upper hand and that, so that they can know exactly who you are and give you a shot that they might not have otherwise given you had you not written your personal statement. There's a list of resources, get your, if you can screenshot it or take a picture of it so that you can go to these websites the um, Fast Web gives you some examples. Um, Common App gives you the list of the prompts. Coalition for College Access, if you don't know about that, that's, that gives you all sorts of resources in helping you prepare and plan 
and apply for college. Um, essay Edge will be helpful. The college essay guy, essay guy he, um, he's a resource, but he also has examples. He's a paid resource, but if you go into his, um, his blog, you'll get some useful information from him. And then the last one um, is if you go to the University of California, EDU and request the insight questions, that's what they're called. They're not called um, personal statement or essay. It's called uh, personal insight questions. That's what you wanna look for. For those of you that I saw in the chat said that you were gonna be applying to UC schools. Any questions? I know that was fast, um, but I'm happy to stay on and answer any questions if anyone has any. Anything in the chat? Any questions? All right. Okay. I'm getting started on my personal essay. That's awesome. Early in the morning. All right. Yes. Good. Thank you. So, youth in the chat, what tips did you learn from Miss Annette? Um, drop them in the chat. And one thing I want you all to cement, especially for those of you who are, so this, these sessions are for our ninth through 12th graders. At the center, we start sharing with you all at third grade to start thinking about what colleges you want to go to and what you want to do for your career. That's why I asked you guys, what do you want to pursue? But especially for you that are in high school, and especially if you're in 11th grade or 12th grade, please make sure that you're paying close attention um, to these details because this information is relevant right now. Please don't feel like this is something that's far away, right? This is for you to take advantage of right now to go to these sources and sites um, to have someone to review your, your essay. Don't you submit your essay without having someone review it. Absolutely. And I'm going, and if you're like, well, Ms. Christo, well, who do I have to review my essay? <laughs> We've got resources and I'm going to share with them in a little bit when I share the announcement. Um, you know, please make sure to, um, you know, look at those common app prompts, um, go over to there. Um, and, and you can already kind of see what kind of questions is your college and university going to ask you. So you can already be prepared. You all, we want you to be competitive. We want you to have that competitive edge. Um, from what Miss um, Miss Jean shared about, you know, making sure your school is accredited. I mean, um, I think one of our parents put in the chat that there's so many things that you may not have been be paying attention to, you know, and you want to be mindful of those things as you're selecting your college, as you're choosing um, where you want to go. Don't just choose because your mom or, or somebody says, oh, this is a good school to go to. You also need to make sure they have your program that they have your academic program because there are lots of great schools, but they don't all um, have all the same majors. You don't want to show up at your school and then they don't have, you know, to become a pediatrician or a psychologist, right? And you want to also choose a school that's going to give you the best program in that area. Because if I were to come, you know, you guys may laugh at this, but if you were to go get your hair cut or to get your hair done, you're going to go to the best person that you know can do your hair. Right. So if you're my doctor and I'm laying on the operation table, I don't want you saying, oh, you're asking me, the patient on the table, is this the right tool? Huh? No, 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 no. Or if you're going to lay down my edges, I need you to lay them down right. If you're going to give me that fade on that haircut, you better do a good job because you're the professional. So we want you all to, to have that mindset where you're thinking as the professional, you guys are developing these skills now in school and in college to become that professional, to become, I saw we have psychologists who wants to be in therapy, who wants to be a nurse practitioner, who wants to be an architect, who wants to be a pediatrician, right? I have all those written down from what you guys have said. And if you are youth that came in um, into the meeting at the end, in the chat, put your name, your grade, and what major you want, what career choice you have or that you desire, because that is totally your reality. And you get to figure it out. This is what this whole process is all about. You figuring out what is the thing that brings you joy, that balance that Miss Jean talked about. You know, we're not just saying this just to say this. This is real life in everything. I love what I do. 
but I sure do take my vacations and I sure I'm creating more balance in my life, right? And so you want to have balance in all those things, building your network, your alumni network, your programs, your tribe and your community. Who is your tribe? Do you know who your tribe is? If you don't know, welcome to the tribe. You're in a tribe right now. You're in a village of the Wooten Center. Okay, and we are your tribe, we're your community. Parents, if you have children who are in third grade, like I, like I just spoke to a parent, we're with, we're starting to sow those seeds. So from third grade, elementary, middle, high school, college, career, and they get to come back and point to the next generation of youth with the AKAs and Tau Beta Omega um, chapter who are here sharing and pouring into your youth. All the sisters here are pouring in so that students have options. All right, youth. You all, you've got options. This is your tribe right here. So please feel free to utilize Miss Annette, Miss Jean, um, everyone that we have here at the Wooten Center, we're here for you to ask those questions. And so please make sure to put your name in the chat. Also have a spin the wheel because we're gonna give away some prizes. And if you didn't put your name in the chat, mm, you missing out your opportunity, mm, right? So please make sure I have it in the chat, the youth, okay? Um, any questions, you guys? Any other comments? Any other nuggets that you got? All right, okay. And, and we wanna also hear from you guys. Like when we say we wanna hear from you, I know you guys are putting in the chat, but also feel free, we wanna hear your voices. Cause just like Miss Jean said, that counselor, right? She, the counselor remembered her daughter and was like, hey, come talk to me. And he was able to give her some tips. So if we, you know, the more that we can see you, hear you, and we want you to feel comfortable, but the more we see you and we can hear you, the more we can say, hey, architect, we know someone who's an architect that we can plug you in and they can give you the inside scoop about what you need to do. So you can apply to the right schools. They may have some scholarships that they want to give you. And that's my really good segue. Next Friday, we're having College and Career Day. On College and Career Day, we share with you people that are in different fields and careers. We also figure out, help you to figure out some of the things um, that you may wanna do. So based on your career, sometimes we take some of these, we're gonna take some of these different um, uh, tests that will give you an idea if you're in the right field. You know, if you're unsure about what you wanna do, it, based on your characteristics, based on your interests, right? For you to help figure out what those things are, right? Meyer Briggs, have you guys heard about Meyer Briggs test? or test along that, in that avenue. Yeah, you can raise your hands there. Um, and then also, so we have College and Career Day next Friday um, from four to 5.30. On third Friday for my seniors, seniors, I want y'all to listen up. We have our cap meet. I'm actually gonna share my screen with the flyer. Um, you can RSVP right now. Um, when you go to wootensend.org slash teens and um, for our seniors, so the essay and your selection of college that we talked about today, you guys are gonna actually have a workshop, an actual breakout where you're gonna be able to connect with mentors from SECBAA, Southern California Council on Black American Affairs. And they're helping you guys to do just that, to read your, you need somebody to read your essay? Someone in the group right here is gonna be reading your essay, giving you feedback. Okay, if you need help with your scholarship, reading your scholarship essay, giving you feedback. All right, if you need help with your, your FAFSA, parents, if you have questions, they are knowledgeable in all of that. So RSVP, wootensend.org slash teens, and you'll see, the, you'll see both events for College and Career Day and for College Applications Night, okay? We're investing in you and we know that you guys are, you are awesome, okay? And so thank you all tonight, um, Miss Annette, Miss Jean, thank you so much for pouring into our youth. You all are fantastic. Um, do we have any, anybody that want to give any other kudos to anyone? Um, to any, any youth that want to say anything to any of our speakers? I see, oh, look, I see some faces. Come on. Oh, I got to do the prize wheel. Yes, go ahead, Peyton. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for taking the time to explain different processes when choosing a college and different programs, because you didn't have to do that today, but you did. So I want to say thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I see some more faces popping up. Come on, Heather, we see you there. Wonderful, wonderful. Awesome, you guys. Okay, let me share, let me share 
We have a wonderful spin the wheel here. Youth, are all of your names on this wheel before I spin it? Um, no. No? Okay, hold on. What state? Say your name. Uh, David. David. Okay, David, please put your name in the chat. Your name, your name, your full name, your grade, and your major. Anybody else? Did we get everybody? All right. Okay, so we're going to spin the wheel. Let's see who's feeling like a winner. Ah! All right, Rain. Congratulations. So, Rain, would you like a Starbucks gift card or a Jamba Juice gift card? Starbucks. But in the chat, you said what now? Starbucks. Starbucks. All right. Okay, let's see. What's this feeling like a winner? <laughs> okay, well, Rain, you can't win twice. <laughs> Let me remove it. Okay, hold on. But that's awesome though. That's that means you're that means you're doubly blessed, right? Double blessed. All right, come on, Jonathan. What would you like, Jonathan? Starbucks or Jump Juice? Some Starbucks. Starbucks. All right. I'm going to spin it one more time. Um, if you're a winner, please put your name and put your email in the chat because I'm going to send you your gift card via email. Ooh. All right, Jillian. What would you like? Jillian? Are you there? Oh, uh, is this a must be present to win situation? You're not here? Okay, let me see. I'm gonna give someone else another opportunity. Okay. All right, Henry. Henry, Mr. Henry, were you, are you here? No, Henry, you're a student. Congratulations. What would you like, Henry? Starbucks. All right. Okay. We got some Starbucks lovers here. All right, you all have a wonderful night. You guys have been awesome. Please put your, if you want a gift card, please put your email in the chat for me and I will send that off to you. And we look forward to seeing you. Remember um, CAP meeting college admissions process every first Friday of the month. So we'll see you again on the first Friday for um, November, but we'll see you next week for college and career day. And the week after that on third Friday for the um, for college applications night, college and career day, college applications night. All right, you all. So have a good one. Have a good one. Take care. Bye bye.